So. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our final open session of our first ever IMPA virtual events week. Uh, we want to thank everybody for all of your attendance over this week. Um, we're really excited to keep in with the theme of today's uh, entire sessions. And I'm here with Jochen from uh, Wilhelmsen, who's going to be doing a uh, presentation on managing plastics uh, with how they deal with that. Uh, without any more wait, I'm going to hand straight over to him and uh, we'll start the session. Good luck, Jochen, and off we go. Thank you very much, Tom. Super. I hope everybody can see me, hear me, and everything is good from the tech side. I'm very happy to be here. Let me uh, share my screen. Um, here we go. And uh, you should all be able to see a presentation now. If not, please let me know, Dom, uh, because then I'm talking for nothing. <laughs> all right. Um, First of all, it's a pleasure to be here at the IMPA uh, today to present. Um, I think in uh, these times of uncertainty, it's extremely um, important uh, as well as also uh, yeah, good for the industry to keep the dialogue. Uh, and that, the, that we do this in this IMPA in a virtual way is of course uh, fantastic. Uh, so I would like to thank you, the organization team, uh, to, to facilitate this event. Very much appreciated. Um, so I'm ha very happy to be here. Um, and it is also a very important topic. Um, it cannot be uh, re-emphasized enough. Reducing plastic waste is very high on the agenda and rightfully so. Um, for us at uh, Wilhelmsen Ship Service, it is a topic that is uh, very much discussed and thought about. Um, and today I would like to give you a little bit of an insight into how we actually do that and how we contribute uh, to the to the plastic management in the industry. Um, so what I actually would like to do is I would like to invite you also to discuss. So whenever there are questions, um, please share them in the, in the message box. And uh, I think then the technical team will make me aware of that. Um, and uh, yes, I would like to, to use this, this uh, presentation also as a meeting point, basically for us to, um, to discuss about procurement, to discuss about responsible procurement and how this can be done in a collaborative way in the industry. Um, and I will share some ideas on how, how we think uh, this can be done. So uh, with further ado, I will just uh, jump right into it um, and give you a little bit of an uh, intro and uh, highlight the agenda. So in the beginning, I will introduce a little bit WSS, uh, Marine Products. Um, so what we are actually selling, what, uh, what we are, who we are, um, for those of you that uh, are not aware yet. Um, and in the second part, I will talk very briefly about um, a circular plastic economy. So how do we actually want to shape, uh, how can we as an industry shape the plastic um, um, economy in that sense and how we can shape the plastic management to remove plastic. Uh, and lastly, and most importantly, is the third part. I would like to share with you our initiatives in the marine products division um, on the reduce, on the removal, on the replacement of plastics. Um, and here I would say the, the target group is basically um, other suppliers in the industry that are now uh, joining the session. Uh, you can just copy our ideas um, very, very much um, open. Uh, also our customers, uh, we would like to invite you for joint collaboration, for idea sharing, for uh, initiatives, um, and uh, of course the rest of the industry for ports, uh, for um, representatives that are interested in the topic. Um, so yes, lastly it's a Q&A, but uh, I can encourage you also to ask uh, questions during the presentation. Um, and I will then jump right into it. So who are we? Um, at the Williamson Ship Service, Marine Products, we are selling five solutions um, to a lot of vessels uh, all, all across the world. So, um, I'm very proud to work in this company. It's a, it's a large network um, across the globe. We are roughly 1,000 professionals uh, working in the division um, and serving roughly 2,000 ports. Uh, so we can call 50% of, of the merchant fleet uh, as our customers. Um, which is uh, very important um, for us. Uh, and uh, we would like to serve them in a most efficient, safe, smart and ecological way. Uh, and especially on the last, the later bit, I'm now uh, basically touch up on with the plastic. 
just a very, very quick uh, discussion on uh, our main solutions. So what are we actually uh, selling? Um, we are selling water, oil, maintenance and repair, ropes and cleaning solutions. Uh, meaning that, or in detail for water, we are selling boiler water treatment, for example, um, other chemical products uh, that are in our knife read range. For oil, we are selling uh, different oil treatment, fuel treatment products um, that are com that make you and our, so our customers compliant with IMO 2020. Um, so these fuel treatment chemicals uh, improve the fuel quality and reduce sludge and emis emissions. We are selling maintenance and repair. And at this point uh, in time, I would like to introduce myself to you um, because uh, I'm responsible for this uh, product solution, which is maintenance and repair. I'm the business manager um, and together with my team, I'm uh, responsible for uh, the whole pro supply chain towards our customers um, for these products, which are, and some of you or most of you might know already, our gases uh, and cylinders that are uh, on, on the merchant fleet across the globe. Um, then our refrigerants also in our cylinders, uh, and lastly, electric and gas welding uh, and welding equipment that, um, that we are selling towards our customers. Um, the fourth um, solution are ropes. Um, you might have heard about the so-called snapback arrester that was recently launched, an innovation of our ropes team, uh, where we basically um, prevent from um, Life uh, from, or we save lives and prevent from bursts, um, risking lives of the crew um, with a snapback arrest that is in, incorporated in the rope. Uh, and here we are selling our Tim range towards our customers. Lastly, cleaning products. Um, our unique tour chemicals are very much uh, known in the market. Um, you might re might remember those uh, green boxes that we are selling. Um, uh, basically, the whole cleaning range covers the essentials that uh, that you need uh, for cleaning on, on board of your vessels. So much uh, on, on us and what we are actually doing. Um, I will now uh, jump forward into the more important part of this of this presentation towards a circular plastic economy. And uh, here, I would like to only present one short framework, uh, which is um, in my eyes, extremely important when we are talking about plastic and how we deal with plastic as an industry in total. Um, you see on the left-hand side, a linear, a linear pl uh, plastic economy from suppliers to the vessels towards the ports where the importance is always emphasized on the vessel. So ship managers, ship owners should reduce their plastic consumption, uh, consume less, make it better uh, and replace, remove and reduce uh, plastic which is uh, of course very important and I cannot highlight this uh, more enough. However, th this is also a joint effort we have to take. And here I'm going to the right to the circular plastic economy where I'm actually talking about the uh, importance also of suppliers, also of ports and especially of the collaboration um, to make, uh, to reduce the plastic in the industry. And the collaboration is the one thing that I would like to highlight in this presentation. So we are basically the supplier piece in this, this circle. Um, we need to already play our part uh, in, the, in the whole chain uh, on how we basically facilitate the reduction of plastic. Um, and I will now in the future, in an upcoming presentation, go into the details on reducing, on removing, on replacing and reusing uh, plastic. So bear with me. Our initiatives on the replacement of plastics. I will start off with a very, very small initiative, but in my eyes, it's a very, very important initiative. Um, those uh, who have already joined the discussion round that was um, presented on the IMPA earlier today uh, have heard to John Beck from Williamson Ship Service, and he was re, um, presenting in the discussion around the, the, uh, the initiative from Williamson Ship Management um, in, uh, in the maritime world. And they have basically on their vessels uh, reduced or um, get rid of the plastic bottles and have introduced water bottles for the crew. Um, and <laughs> we at uh, WSS, so Williamson Ship Service, Marine Products, have uh, adapted this uh, this manner in our central uh, in our offices in Central and South America. Um, 
So it's a very small initiative. It's, it's, it's on, in the offices and in the warehouses where our um, colleagues adapted this on their own initiative, which I personally believe is extremely fantastic. So why is this important? They have basically jumped on the bandwagon, adapted the idea from, w, from WSM. And it is important because it, it basically shows already that empowerment of the employees and that the engagement, the enabling of employees to do initiatives, no matter how small or how big they are, um, should be on the corporate agenda already of a company. Um, I'm very proud to work in a company that, that encourages us to, uh, to, to represent stewardship, to go um, upfront, to get initiatives done on sustainability and that have sustainability actions on their, on their big agenda and in their strategic uh, goals. So this is already at the, at the corporate level important when we talk about how we can reduce plastic waste. Uh, and, and this comes already um, as part as a, of the corporate culture. And this is why I believe that this, these pictures that you can see of our South American team is already representing a very important part uh, in the industry of the movement towards a plastic reduction. A second initiative that we have taken um, is the initiative on sustainable filler material. We have used sustainable filler material in our main distribution hub. You can imagine as a global supplier supplying in 2000 ports, it's very difficult actually, um, or it's not difficult, but it, it's, it's quite an effort to um, move the, the products around the globe. Uh, and we, we of course have also uh, boxes uh, uh, that are sent across uh, the, con the continent. And those boxes are filled in our distribution hub. And there you have a lot of empty spaces in some times. Of course, we have to we try to pack as best as we can, but there are sometimes empty spaces and we used to fill those empty spaces with uh, plastic air pillows that uh, were filling material. But our team, our operations team in, in, the, in, the, in the main hub uh, got the idea that we can actually uh, recycle used carton boxes with a shredder to transform them into filling material. And this has a lot of advantages actually, not only reducing plastic, which is the main advantage, but also we can use carton that we have as a waste material already um, to be more ecological friendly. Um, so basically we are reusing and recycling waste um, that we have in, with this initiative. So um, a very, very uh, uh, interesting one uh, and I can only encourage it. I think in the chat, Earlier today, I have read somebody that uh, wrote that they also used uh, corn uh, and, and bio biodegradable corn as filling material. It was very interesting. I, I, uh, I will have a look into that or, um, or give this further to operations. Um, so there are, in, there are ideas on how to get rid uh, of these plastic, uh, plastic air pillows, which I think is, is, really, is a really good idea. Third in initiative on replace. Um, and this is an initiative that is extremely important, I believe. Um, we have introduced a new product, which is called Unique, uh, Unitor Cargo Clean HD. Um, and this is a chemical that is basically uh, uh, used in order to, to clean cargo holds. So uh, very, very difficult to remove pet cokes and stains. And uh, sometimes it's very difficult and it needs to have a lot of active components. Um, and what we have done is, uh, in comparison, for example, to our former product, we could um, increase the, the, um, the no, not increase the active components, but the, but the foaming that it foams basically much more, and that it requires only less, meaning half of the active components within uh, the chemical, meaning that the usage of this chemical then is reduced to only half of the quantity, meaning that uh, now you basically mix water to a much greater extent together with this chemical, reducing basically the, the boxes by half. And this of course has a big impact uh, in environmental footprint of our boxes and how, how, many, how many we sell and how many are then basically um, used across the globe. Very important as well here, of course, not only we reduce the plastic, but also the storage space requirements, we uh, reduce transportation and we reduce handling costs. 
Um, and maybe one last comment on this one. We are, of course, now looking further for other products. Um, I think also in our diesel power range uh, to to make the con to increase the concentration and hence um, reduce the plastic that we are actually that we need for these kind of products. Because in the end, these kind of products, of course, if we talk about chemicals, we can't deliver them, for example, in carton boxes or metal boxes. That unfortunately is not working. The next replace is a very interesting one. Um, for our ropes, um, we are investigating the possibility to use less abrasive material. Ropes can shed microplastic into the ocean due to abrasion. If you think about uh, ropes and uh, how they are used on board, um, some of you have probably been uh, already a lot on vessels. Uh, you know that there are uh, rough edges, uh, rust, uh, sharp edges, where the, the rope has basically a wear and tear. Uh, on these steel surfaces and a typical rope then gets damaged along the way. And it will have a, a abrasion down to the finest fibers that pulls off the coating. And this coating is actually microplastic and this microplastic gets into the ocean. So already on the ropes, we are having, so that are in use, so not the ropes itself when we are basically uh, um, then have, uh, have to waste them, but uh, already the ropes in use create plastic. And by choosing fibers and coating that have uh, improved abrasion resistance, the industry can actually reduce microplastic significantly. And this one I would like to highlight is, is the one that we have to do jointly. Because um, as I talked uh, earlier about the, the cycle, it is not only us that needs to provide those um, those ropes, but also the, the customers that, that, are, that need to be willing to pay, of course, some uh, extra um, uh, dollars for the material that is then used in, in those abrasive resistant uh, ropes. Uh, so it needs to be a joint effort because uh, this material is more expensive. Are there any questions so far? I, uh, if so, then uh, Dom, you have to uh, jump in because I can't see the, uh, the screen right now. Um, if there are any questions in the chat box, but if not, then I will just continue. Uh, please uh, continue, Joachim. We've had a couple of nice comments about the culture of uh, suppliers uh, starting uh, the solution first, at beginning with them, but no questions as of yet. Of course, if anyone yep. does have any questions, they can please add them into the chat box and we'll jump to them at the end. But uh, for now, please continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. <clears throat> then I will continue with uh, our actions on remove uh, of plastic. Um, and for this one, I would like to first highlight our so-called Unitor mixing station and reusable hand sprayers that are diluting our cleaning chemicals uh, on board. And uh, for this one, I would like to show you a little video. Um, I'm not sure whether this, is, this one is shown with a sound. It is not very important, the sound, so it's, it's just a nice uh, a jingle in that sense. Uh, so bear with me if there is no sound. If yes, uh, I'm very happy. <laughs>
Yes. So on this one, whoops. Um, yeah, I will just jump to the next slide, but I will just continue to talk about the the mixing station. So on this one, it's it's very important to to mention that with this mixing station and with the purchase of our chemicals, we are basically able to um, to mix the, the chemicals first of all in the right uh, mixing uh, uh, concentration. So it's done automatically, but much more importantly, you can use the spray bottle, um, which has a, a perfect dilution of the chemicals itself. And that helps you to save uh, a lot of plastic uh, uh, over time uh, in two ways. First of all, uh, you have one plastic bottle that uh, the mixing station fills up um, that you reuse all the time on board of a vessel. So there is no need for single use plastic bottles anymore. And secondly, the dilution of the chemical on the spray bottle is already so uh, fine that basically you also save the amount of chemicals that you use uh, on a consistent basis, meaning you also reduce the amount of, of uh, chemical drums. Uh, and hence, again, you are reducing the amount of plastic. So I can encourage you um, to really reach out to our sales and um, customer service representatives uh, if you're interested uh, in a mixing station because it's super hassle-free and basically helps you also to, uh, to reduce the environmental footprint um, when it comes to cleaning chemicals and the drums. Okay, then I'm coming to the next remove um, initiative that we have taken, and and here I have an experience. I made an experience myself. Whenever, because uh, interestingly, I'm talking here about electrodes. You can see the picture on, on the slide, and uh, electrodes are in the MNR range that I'm responsible for. And when I'm going into a supplier meeting, uh, I'm I'm I have used to now. I'm getting myself used to always ask, uh, "Hey guys, is there something we can do jointly?" Uh, in order to be more sustainable? Just a simple question um, to our supplier. And just imagine that any everybody in the industry uh, that has a supplier meeting or a meeting with a customer would ask, can we do anything around sustainability together? Uh, there, there are a lot of good ideas come up, I'm, I'm very sure. Um, and for example, this is just a small uh, thing, but it's important um, for our electrodes, we are using recyclable plastic meaning that at least from a supplier point of view, we are going the first step into a recycle cycle, let's say. So if then our customers use the plastic and uh, discharge it and dispose it in a, in a correct way, this plastic can then be in the end of the cycle, uh, be recycled again. And uh, so it's very important uh, to, for us to do that because we cannot always use cardboard boxes, for example, if you think around electrodes, around the corrosion or dangerous goods such as chemicals, um, there we just have no other choice. But if we then choose plastic, uh, we do it consciously and we are taking the right plastic. So for example, um, as you can see on the slide, we are talking about uh, uh, the polypropylene, especially that is uh, a, a lot um, in, our, in our plastic wrappings uh, that is recyclable. So you can see that always on the plastic resin identification codes that you can see on the pack packaging. Very important uh, topic actually. Um, and of course, we are continuously working uh, on with our suppliers to identify enhancement possibilities. And we have actually also put this now into our uh, supplier code of contact, uh, conduct um, that we want to be uh, sustainable and uh, basically show our responsibility here. The next one I would like to mention is a, uh, an initiative on re reduction. And here we got actually uh, challenged by um, our customer WSM, Williamson Ship Management. Um, uh, and it was very interesting, very good. They also put basically uh, to, uh, stated in their um, code of conduct with their suppliers that we need to present our initiatives on sustainability. And um, our team, operations team and QHSSE team in Singapore was, was then reflecting on what can we do in order to be more sustainable and uh, came up with initi initiatives. Uh, and I really like the initiatives, it's fantastic. Um, if you can see on the picture, you see on the right hand side, the machine that is used uh, to, to basically stretch the, the, the film wrapping um, around our product palettes. And um, what the team has done is they have optimized the program 
in order to use less of the wrapping material uh, used per pellet. Uh, and that saved already quite a significant amount of plastic. In addition, they have then used polyester strapping band to reduce the stretch film that is actually needed to secure the product pellets. So the more stronger the, the, the polyester strapping, the better the wrapping and the less of the products you need. I actually, I remember I read in the in the comment section in an earlier event in the IMPA that uh, there's also somebody using paper uh, uh, strapping band. Of course, I'm not, an, <laughs> I'm not a specialist I'm uh, on this topic, but it's very interesting to look into and uh, maybe I can give this comment further uh, to my colleagues. I guess they have looked into that. If it's possible, then uh, should be a good idea. Um, yes. What they have done is they have replaced conventional stretch film with high performance uh, with the same strength, but half the weight. So again, we have reduced the, the, the weight of the plastic by half. And we are now constantly working with recycling companies to reduce the waste material and to recycle it. Uh, so that's basically the last step in, in, the, in the circle. Now I'm coming to the last uh, point of our supply initiatives, and this is reuse. Uh, and here we are investigating uh, for possibilities of reusing ropes. I already mentioned ropes uh, are plastic. Ropes are waste when they are lost or discarded and due to their high combustion rate, ropes are actually products with no proper take back system after use. Uh, and this is of course a, a, a big struggle for the industry. It's very difficult to recycle ropes due to its energy grade and due to the high combustion temperature. So. Simply speaking, if I would say it simply, ropes simply have too pure plastic and very difficult to recycle. So what we are thinking around is a new way of recycling and finding other applications where ropes can be used. For example, that old ropes that are not used on a, on a big vessel anymore can be used in different kinds of vessels. For example, in the fishing industry, that ropes are actually reused in a smart way. This would be recycling, uh, a new way of recycling, if you will, um, that we are currently investigating. And here I'm coming back to the to the to the loop basically, and uh, this is already I'm going into the direction of closing off the presentation. Um, basically, what I've done is I've presented you our initiatives that we have been running as a supplier um, in order to be more sustainable, friendly, and also to reduce the plastic waste. Um, sometimes they are small initiatives, sometimes they are a little bit bigger, but uh, hey, everything counts here. I think the, it's very important to be engaged, to discuss, to discuss with suppliers, to discuss with customers, to show initiative. Uh, and if then um, everybody is willing to, to, to play their role and their part, we are more and more driving and going towards a circular plastic economy where we then actually um, are able to uh, reduce plastic in a tremendous way um, and um, we as Williamson Ship Service will definitely try our best to play our part in this um, and um, if there are any other suppliers that have ideas please reach out to us we are very uh, happy to adapt good initiatives um, if there are suppliers in the call that um, take over some of our initiatives that I just presented fantastic perfect it's good for the industry good for the environment and if there are customers in the call that uh, would like to reach out to us on some of the products that i've presented um, i can invite you to visit our booth uh, as well as contact uh, our uh, global offices around the globe um, for the products and for more information um, our customer service is extremely willing to help you um, and we can also provide more information and uh, yes, with this one, I, um, I can actually start going into the Q&A. Thank you very much, Jochen. That was, uh, it's great to hear about all the initiatives that are, that are happening in the industry right now to improve the situation, especially with plastics and sustainability like mm. that. Um, we haven't had any questions coming at the moment, but it's great to see a lot of nice comments from, from supplier side as well about about uh, agree, in agreement essentially of what uh, we're <laughs> doing here and what you're trying to what you're trying to achieve it's, it's really great to see um i will uh, stress again that uh wilhelmson do have a booth at our expo and you can go across and ask them uh, any questions about this or anything else um, and obviously get in touch with them through their usual channels 
Um, really, thank you very much, Joachim, for that. It was a fantastic, it was a fantastic uh, presentation. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. John, I'll, I'll just, can I just jump Absolutely, in? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Joachim, hi, it's, uh, hi. it's uh, Steve Alexander here at, at, at DIMPA. Um, I thought that was a really interesting presentation because I mean, you did mention that some of the initiatives were were um, were were off the back, let's say, of being, um, um, you know, sort of you, you were challenged, I think you said, by WSM. But also some of these were actually sort of um, initiatives that you've taken on board yourself as, as a supplier. Mm. Um, I mean, it, th I think I think that's inspirational for all suppliers out there because I think that it's very easy to think, oh, this is something that doesn't really involve me. This yes. is something, you know. And I, I really liked what you said about, you know, what what as suppliers you have to do is just think again about the materials that you're using and possibly mm. about how how you can recycle. Mm. This, the circular economy sort of around around plastic was interesting, but I'm I'm interested to know what your perspective on ports is because you did say mm. you focused on the vessel, you yes. focused on 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 the supplier, but mm. the, the the issue of ports and mm. you know, I think there are some challenges with recycling with ports. I mean, what have Willemson have experienced with? with collaborating with the ports in terms of recycling. Mm. To, be, to, be, to be very frank, I think we are not yet at the stage uh, where we have discussed a, a huge amount with ports yet. Uh, but I'm, of course, only talking for my product portfolio. I think uh, the, my, my colleagues in the ropes team uh, and in other product portfolio teams are a little bit further than me. Um, but where, what I'm trying to say is that the, the recycling circle basically also afterwards and in, in, in ports the the waste management in ports is a huge important topic and uh, to be to be very honest what you mentioned and the question is rightfully perfect um is that we we need to get to into the discussion to to also think around with when we supply something then the customer uses it they dispose it how can this then always get traced back basically into the cycle uh, the the whole to to make the whole chain working i think that's that's a challenge uh, and that is something we we jointly need to need to tackle for sure so a very very important comment i think um the other thing that i really liked about what you were saying which of course is very you know uh, very key for impa is the the idea of collaboration i i loved mm. your approach to say you know to other suppliers you know talk to us and share ideas you mm. know share, share initiatives and share what you're doing i mean i think that's something that impa would would want to be a part of as well bringing people together to you know to share in, initiatives i mean the simple idea that you presented of sort of you know kind of um chopping up cardboard boxes and, and stuff to use as packaging materials really simple initiatives mm. but there, there it's just about thinking about things isn't it and of course as a collaborative team it's it's sometimes mm. easier i mean if you're a small supplier working in in somewhere in the world you know you're just so busy aren't you working on yeah um, working on day-to-day -day business and you mm. know you don't, often don't have the time to think about these things but yeah. perhaps working together um uh, my bosses on the um on the questions here, Susan Coford, our CEO, um, mm. he's saying as an owner, you often find yourself with lots of different chemicals delivered on board. Um, and so do you offer a service to assist an owner to reduce these chemicals and therefore the plastic delivered? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so basically the two initiatives that I presented in, in my presentation are already a very important first step. So if you, for example, uh, use our unit or mixing station in order to reduce the single use plastic for the spray do for the spray doses, for example, you have already come a, lo a long way. But also the concentration of the chemicals that we are more and more increasing helps our customers basically to, to buy less of the drums, meaning yeah. they use less plastic, they need less plastic, and there's less transportation uh, and less handling. So these two initiatives from our side are already a, a part to um, as much as we can reduce the plastic of our chemical products uh, okay. on board. Okay, here's... Yes. Mm. Big uh, question. Customer. 
big question with that because I, yeah. I love that. It's got to be the way forward, hasn't it? To use concentrated chemicals that you can you can combine with water. I mean that must be must be the way forward. What about cost? Can I ask you? Is that also representing a cost saving? I mean, it's li it's lesser, you know, chemicals. So I mean, can we also say it's a cost saving with that? Uh, no, I I would. I would, that I would need to ask our chemicals team in general how this is then done, but uh, on the on the ingredients, etc. So there there is of course uh, there I can't give you a clear answer on this, but but generally of course the active components in the chemicals are in a different way uh, than in in other chemicals. The dilution is a different one, and hence also the cost base in that sense. But I, uh, the details there I need to I uh, you cannot go to our booth and our our team will assist you. Okay, okay, that's good. Mm. Um, let's have a look. We've got another question here coming in. How are we going to make sure the manufacturers of the products will be able to provide them with as eco-friendly as possible and how soon? So, you know, um, uh, can we say these, these, um, these chemicals you're talking about, for instance, are more eco-friendly and, and, and what's kind of happening hmm. in terms of making this product more and more eco-friendly. Yeah. Very, very good point. So uh, if you think our our chemicals, or if you think about our, our Biomax range, et cetera, we have different ranges that are biodegradable and that are actually not harmful to the ocean at all. So uh, when you dispose them, you can uh, dispose them and it, it's, not an, it's not harmful. So we are definitely also working on the components in the chemicals uh, to make them uh, environmentally friendly. And uh, I think we are very on a very good way there. So that, that is the, um, definitely a good point. And I can really encourage, uh, encourage you to, to also visit our uh, webpage and to visit our product catalog. Then you can read about all the chemicals, about the ingredients and uh, as well. Also, uh, if they are biodegradable and, and how basically we contribute uh, to a sustainable environment with our chemicals. Mm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, I think perhaps they, they may be your colleagues saying that um, WSS plastic pails are fully yes. recyclable, because that's another thing that we've discussed within the IMPA Council over recent years. That you know, there's there's other sides of this. Mm. There's the actual you know plastic containers themselves for the for the chemicals, and and that can be um, you know it that can be. Um, you know that's an issue in it in itself um yes I, I think i want to take up uh, uh, also one comment of course we are uh, wilhelmsen makes we make our own chemicals in our own plant meaning that we have the uh, complete control over the quality and the process so everything that is supplied from wilhelmsen is coming from our own factory in, in on the chemical side and and we have a good control over what we supply uh, and about the quality mm. 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 yeah excellent um you know, quality, of course, well, another major issue. Um, okay, I think uh, we are we are drawing to a close. Uh, lots of people saying uh, thank you, nice and clear, very good presentation, um, uh, and and I thank you for that, uh, Jochen. You you actually represent the last session of our our Impa Week, so we owe you a special thanks. And congratulations. Mm. We sign off with you in terms of um, what we've been trying to do this week. So um, uh, let me just say um, on behalf of IMPA, thank you to Jochen and to all of our contributors this week. Um, I would say, look, this was a first, um, a first uh, go at uh, this. We are in a new environment, as we all know, and uh, it's been a massive learning cur curve for, for um, my team at the IMPA office um, um, and we'll learn a lot from this. We will, I'm sure, be doing um, something more uh, and more uh, like this in the in the future. We we are committed as one of our IMPA pillars to bring people together in a in whatever environment that means, be it digitally or face to face. And um, and so I would like to send out a huge thank you to everybody that played a part in things over the last few days, our speakers and our contributors, um, our IMPA volunteers, and um, 
and everybody else. And uh, there is still, of course, plenty of time to go and visit um, our stand holders uh, at the little expo. We're going to be building on that expo um, at future events and be doing all sorts of things with our very loyal and supportive sponsors and exhibitors. A huge thank you to them for playing a part in the sort of contribution that they have made during this week. And of course, that goes on. But uh, for now, let me uh, draw a close and um, uh, thank everybody involved and uh, wish you a pleasant day. Likewise. Likewise. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.